Well, hello everybody. This is Lisa de Nicolet's writer for a year, and this is Isabella. And she's being very patient, and I'm not sure how long she's going to stay here. But there's a reason for Isabella being a shame, a little heart beating. And because today's topic is reviews. And reviews, well, when people ask me, how do you deal with a bad review? Okay, I think she wants to go. Hang on one second. Goodbye. Um, she's probably never going to forgive me for that, which brings me to reviews. Um, how do you get over a bad review? How do you move on? Well, the truth is you don't and you can't and you never do. And now I've got cat hair all over my face. But the thing is, <laughs> it's not our fault that we, we don't get over um, bad reviews and things. I've been reading this book, um, which is... New Scientist, the Instant Expert, How Your Brain Works. And apparently, memories that are um, threatening or that are very strong memories are called flashbulb memories. And these are burned into your brain in detail. And they're usually um, associated with really, really strong emotions. So the fact that, you know, when you get a bad review, that you, you kind of like it lives with you forever, well, that's not your fault. Your brain is hardwired to, to do that, which is really unfortunate because there's a lot of good stuff out there. Now, the other thing is, as well is, you know, do you would you pick a bad review over no review because they say no publicity is worse than bad publicity bad publicity is always better but i i don't know it's it's such a such a tough thing um also with reviews you know a lot of people are like so what you know how do you rate on amazon what are your amazon reviews amazon is extremely controlling. Amazon is not the friend of the independent publisher. In fact, you know, even the self-publisher, if a friend of mine um, writes a review on Amazon, but they've also published a book, Amazon will go in there and say that that is a subjective review and they will remove it. Which really, I mean, considering that the writing community, we're all reading each other stuff, and we're also really discerning. It is very rare for a person to step up and give a great review for a book that they don't believe in. So, you know, Amazon's basically questioning our integrity. Like, don't you, you know, we, what what would we would we give someone a great review if we didn't believe in the book? The fact is we don't. So um, be wary of Amazon. They are not um, the independent publisher's good friend. Um, do write things for, for your friends and post things because it's spreading the word. And I think, you know, because I was walking along and I was thinking about the Minerva Reader, um, you know, as from the last, following the last post. And it's really wonderful when people, and I people are really wonderful to me. They'll email me or even text me or Instagram, you know, post something on Instagram. Hey, I read this book and I really loved it. And that's fantastic. So in all those happy little moments, I put together. Um, onto my website, um, which is another angled approach of the whole kind of social media thing, which is lisadenicolitswriter.com. And that website, uh, I've come up against some criticism for that website because people have been like, well, you're a designer. It doesn't look very designed. But the thing is, it's more like a scrapbook of happy memories. So, um, you know, when the, the bad review comes up, whatever, uh, then you can, you know, you could look at all these good things that happened. Um, Goodreads is another place where, you know, a lot of people post reviews and, and that's also good. Goodreads is a strange place. It's also become extremely controlling. For example, I used to give um, books away and the giveaways were really very, very positive towards creating publicity for a, for a book. But now you have to pay, I think it's $100 for a giveaway. So I, I don't have the money for that. I mean, my publisher's really small. She can't, you know, fund every author with, with a giveaway on Goodreads. So Goodreads has become increasingly controlling that way. And people with, like, you'll go on Goodreads and you'll see, like, someone will have, like, I don't know, like, you know, 3,000 reviews or 3,000 rates. That's because their publisher was able to flood the market with their book and, and get those books out there. So... Anyway, I'm really hoping that maybe, you know, when you look at things like the Amazon reviews and the Goodreads um, and you're like, wow, this person doesn't have a lot of ratings or, you know, why doesn't this person have more Amazon uh, things or whatever, that you'll know a bit of the backstory behind it. So um, 
those are my words of wisdom um, for this installment and now I'm going to go and find my cat and I'm going to apologize to her so thank you very much and I hope today was helpful thank you bye